Thank you for joining us for the Computer um, Science Meet Your Professor webinar series. I am Danielle and I'm an enrollment advisor at Acadia. I graduated in 2016 and have been working at the university since then. Um, there are others on the call as well, but they will introduce themselves um, shortly. So for the agenda today, we'll just go through a few housekeeping items and then um, what you need to know for the fall. Then I'll hand it over to Computer Science. Um, and then we'll go over how to stay in contact with us over the next few months, and then we'll have a live Q&A session. Um, so if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box, or you can wait until the very end to ask them. Um, and during the presentation, please keep um, your mics off and um, your cameras off just to save bandwidth. Um, this presentation will be recorded to use for future reference on our website and will be available for you to watch again within 24 to 48 hours. Um, and if you're interested in any other program, those webinars are also lo located on our website. Um, so I know a lot of you are probably wondering what the fall is going to look like. Um, most of you, if not all of you, would have received an email from President Ricketts last week stating Acadia's preferred approach of a blended on-campus um, and online learning environment. And although we do not have all the details to share with you today, the team is actively working to share what details we do know and provide additional updates as soon as possible. Um, so we encourage you to stay in the know by following Acadia U News um, and new to Acadia U on Instagram. And updates will also be posted on our website. Um, and you can also find the copy of President Ricketts statement um, for the fall that he released last week. Our summer orientation day is going virtual and it will be focusing on preparing you for your transition to Acadia. So keep an eye out for that. That will be happening all summer long. And now I will hand it over to computer science. Hi, so um, my name is Darcy Benoit and I am the director of the Drodry School of Computer Science uh, and a professor there as well. I've been with the Drodry School of Computer Science for 18 years now. So I, I look forward to telling you about the programs that we have to offer. Um, the Bachelor uh, of Computer Science actually comes in two different flavors. One is uh, the regular Bachelor of Computer Science and the other is the Bachelor of Computer Science with Honors. And then we also have a Bachelor of Applied Computer Science degree. And the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science degree is really the, the core of the Bachelor of Computer Science degree, along with, um, along with us taking some of our other courses and piecing them together to allow you to apply it into a particular uh, field. So uh, all of these programs are available with the co-op option, but what I would like to do is start talking in a little bit more detail about the Bachelor of Computer Science with honors. So as we go to the next slide there, um, we can begin to see a little bit about this. So the Bachelor of Computer Science with Honors is probably the most challenging degree that we have. So people often ask about this one first. This is what they want to know. You know, what's the most challenging degree that we have? Um, it's really a lot of the same courses as the regular Bachelor of Computer Science degree. Um, but what we do is we up the requirements a little bit from the perspective of the fact that now a minimum mark of B minus is required in your courses to pass as opposed to C minus. So that means that not only do you have to pass the courses, but you actually have to do better in them. There's an extra math course um, that the BCS students don't have to take. Um, and there are a couple of required computer science courses that the regular BCS students don't need to take. So the Bachelor of Computer Science is um, is actually uh, the core of our degree. So the honors adds to the core for the Bachelor of Computer Science. Um, so either way, you start out the same. So the Bachelor of Computer Science, as I said, it's the core. It's a wide range of all the required computer science curriculum that you would expect in any computer science course, uh, while still giving you the option for elective courses in your interest area. Uh, the big difference between the Bachelor of Computer Science and the Bachelor of Computer Science with Honors is the pass mark is now a C minus uh, instead of a B minus. And of course, there's the extra couple courses the honor students take. So um, going beyond that, we have the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science. 
So the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science is most of the courses from the Bachelor of Computer Science degree. Not all of them, but most of them. And the Applied Computer Science is really intended to say, here's a degree that lets you take computer science and uh, and focus in one particular area. So sort of to specialize a little bit with a, a what we call a defined option. <clears throat> so basically in, a, in an applied computer science degree, we just bundle up your electives and, uh, and say, here's your degree. So what we do is uh, for the first one, I'll talk about here, data analytics. What we do is we say applied computer science degree, we want you to focus on data analytics. So you take that core of courses, and then there's some extra courses that you would take, including some extra math courses, some extra statistics courses, and of course, data analytics courses. So that is what we would sort of bundle up together for the data analytics um, specialization. Um, also, we have one in game development. So this is video game development. So the extra courses include um, an extra math course, um, as well as game development, human interaction course, human computer interaction courses that one would take. And for software development, actually, uh, interestingly enough, we, what we do is we include some business and communications courses, as well as advanced software development courses, because people in software development are often working on the business side of the business. So it's worthwhile to have those communications and business courses. Um, we also have a Bachelor of Applied Computer Science in Mobile and Ubiquitous Computing. So this is basically programming uh, handhelds like phones or sort of those ubiquitous computing devices, uh, set-top boxes, uh, infotainment systems in cars, things like that. Um, and what we ask for in this particular degree, um, we have a mobile computing course and human computer interaction courses, but also some psychology courses, one of which is cognition to help us understand how people interact with things and, and how that would uh, benefit uh, writing software. Um, we also have a Bachelor of Applied Computer Science where you can do a second major. So uh you do the core computer science degree and then fulfill the requirements of the second major whatever that may be um so if it's physics you take a bunch of physics courses and if it's uh english you take a bunch of english courses basically whatever the requirements are in that particular field um, we also have what we call an interdisciplinary minor which is where you fulfill the requirements for a minor or a double minor in other units. So this is essentially just a degree where you're getting the core computer science, but you're wanting to apply that computer science to some other field. And this allows you to take the courses that you want in those other fields where you might want to apply computer science. So that's uh, pretty much for our degrees. Um, one of the things I wanted to do is highlight uh, some of our alumni so that you can see uh, who our alumni are and where they've gone. So the first two alumni um, actually have both left Acadia and, uh, and become professors in computer science. One uh, is currently, so Dr. Alexis Morris is an assistant professor and a Canada research chair at OCAD University in Ontario. He does a lot of work with um, wearable technology and the like. Um, the second person I wanted to highlight is Dr. Kasia Muldner, who's an associate professor at actually at the Ign Institute of Cognitive Science at Carleton University. So a computer scientist working in, in cognitive science, which is really a branch of psychology, um, an area that interested her quite a bit. So, um, so we have people who have gone on to that level. So of course, Alexis and Kasia have been graduated for some number of years now. I remember teaching uh, Alexis um, myself. So um, they can go and, and you know, proceed down that route if they're interested in pursuing further degrees. We also have here um, Haley Nemi, who's a software developer for um, Zware Inc., which is actually a local software development company. She's doing some mobile development. She worked for a bit for Lockheed Martin and another couple of companies after her graduation a couple of years ago. So, um, so she's a, another alumni that is really doing well in the field. 
And then we also have Vestasia Williams, who's an IT specialist and doing application development at IBM. Um, both of these students are very recent within the past couple of years um, and are both uh, working in the field, uh, doing quite well for themselves. And the last two that I wanted to focus on, uh, one is James Walsh. Um, a number of our students have done this recently. They've actually gone out and started their own business. And James is one of these people who graduated and started his own, his own business. Um, the, the business is called My Flock Incorporated. He actually is working on software to help people manage um, uh, their chicken population in the agricultural industry. Um, he's been doing quite well with that particular business. The other is a student, I believe James and CD were in the same graduating class. Um, Sidi is actually a surgical innovation fellow at McGill University at the moment. So very different ending paths of where they ended up, but both still with uh, computer science, regular computer science degrees from Acadia. So uh, students usually generally want to know what the first year looks like. Um, the general first year for a computer science student looks like the following. Um, in the fall, you take a computer science class called Programming One, and we teach that class in Python at the moment. Um, most students will take a Calculus One class, and they will take a Matrix Algebra class and two elective courses. Uh, and in the winter term, they'll take Programming Two, which is Java, taught in Java, where you learn object-oriented programming, and Calculus Two and discrete math, as well as two elective courses. Now. I'd like to say that we take students into programming one, assuming that they don't know how to program. So that class really is an introduction to programming um, because we assume that when students come here, they uh, don't actually have that knowledge behind them. So that means we do have an alternate first year plan. And in our alternate first year plan, students with programming experience can take both programming one and programming two in their first term and then in their second term take programming three uh, which is a second year course where we teach c programming um, and c is systems programming so um, students who uh, have that experience get that chance to jump ahead a little bit in their degree now if you're taking the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science, some of those Bachelor of Computer Science, Applied Computer Science uh, defined options do not require calculus. So that means that some of them don't have to take calculus. So in their first year, I would advise the students based on which degrees require calculus and which ones don't, whether or not they need to take calculus. But as I mentioned before, um, some of these uh, uh, specializations in the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science um, have other fields that you need to take um, courses from. So, for example, if you're in mobile and ubiquitous computing, it re requires two or three psychology courses. So I would tell students as their first year elective to take psychology. If they were doing software development, I would tell the students to take a couple of business courses. So the first year plans will sort of depend on where you're coming in and what you have for requirements. For example, some students will come in and they'll want the regular Bachelor of Computer Science degree, but they don't have pre-calculus from high school. That's OK. We can get them a pre-calculus course in the fall and we can still work them through the calculus course in the winter term. So all of those plans are, are worked out once we know what your requirements are once you get here. So um, that's about all that I uh, no, I should say. Let's go on to the Acadia experience. So yeah, the first year students, um, what they usually end up doing here is uh, learning the building blocks of their degree, which means that uh, we don't have a lot of computer science courses, mainly because of the fact that students coming in, some of them don't know how to program yet. So we end up like with a lot of other programs where you, you only have one course in your field in your first year. And for us, it's one computer science and a lot of math courses. Um, 
So a lot of students come in and they sort of feel like the first year is everything but computers. But that first year is really important because it's laying the building blocks of understanding how to program. Um, and as we get into second year, then you end up getting significantly more computer science courses in your degree. And uh, as it goes on, you get uh, uh, the funnel sort of opens up and you get more uh, courses in more fields, more things that you're interested in. So that's sort of what that experience is like first year. Now, how we differ from elsewhere um, is that we have the benefit of a small university, which means we have small class sizes and direct interaction with faculty. So uh, what do I mean by small class sizes? Well, you're probably not going to see a class in your first year that's required that has more than um, 70 or 80 students in it. As a matter of fact, that programming one class that we're talking about in first term, right now there's two sections and each, each section has under 60 students in it. So the classes are actually pretty small in comparison. I was talking with someone the other day at a big unnamed university in Canada that was talking about a first year programming class with 2,000 students and sections of 500 students per section. And we're talking, you know, 120 students with 60 students per section. So small class size is definitely um, direct interaction with faculty. Um, so that means that most of your classes are going to be taught by uh, tenure track or tenure stream faculty members. Um, at the university, so not a ton of, uh, you know, hiring grad students and part timers to teach lower level courses. Um, so when you take your first year course, you're going to end up with uh, a tenure track faculty member teaching that first year course. Um, as a matter of fact, if you show up at Acadia in the fall, um, there's a 50 50 chance that you'll get me teaching one at your first year class because uh, I'm teaching one section and another faculty member is teaching the other. So that is the benefit of a small university, those small class sizes and the direct interaction with faculty. But the other benefit of Acadia is that we have some of the benefits of a large university. And the first one might sound kind of odd, but we're not integrated with our math department. And some of the small universities, in order to manage a computer science degree, what they have to do is they have to get, have computer science and math and stats all combined in the same department. Um, and we don't do that at Acadia. We have our own school of computer science, which means that not only are we our own department and we offer our own uh, program, but we actually have our own accredited degree. So instead of getting a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, you're actually getting a Bachelor of Computer Science degree, which means that every six years, an external body comes in and looks at our curriculum, looks at what we're teaching, compares that against what we're supposed to be teaching, and gives us an accreditation, the same way they do all of the big universities across Canada, so that they know and we know that we're teaching the right material. So Acadia really is the best of both worlds. We won't stick you in a class of 500 students. We'll make sure that you're taking classes that are being taught by the faculty members in the department. We'll make sure that you get the classes that you need to succeed. And, uh, and we'll just make sure that your experience is the best that it can be, because that's what we're here for. Now, uh, also, in terms of uh, social things at the university because nobody comes to university to just study. Um, we have a computer science society. Um, uh, the computer science society meets on a regular basis. Um, society has events throughout the year. Um, a welcome lunch with faculty, land, board games, um, some game tournaments they have during the year. They help out with the banquet at the end of the year. We also have um, a women in technology group, which spans not just computer science, but engineering and some of the other fields that have technology in them. And, uh, and they meet and are active as well. So we have a lot of stuff that's going on there. And that's just two of the groups amongst the, you know, the dozens and dozens of societies and, and student groups that exist on campus. Um, 
from an employment opportunity perspective, um, particularly at the university, some faculty members hire students to do research over the summer. We often do this in conjunction with the co-op uh, office and the co-op program, although it doesn't necessarily have to be the co-op program. The school itself hires a co-op student to work for the year to help with various school events and general help for students and faculty. And of course, we hire numerous students as markers for our courses. But beyond that, um, the employment opportunities for computer science students are actually quite high. Our placement rate in the co-op program is well north of the 90% range. Um, most every student who is looking for a job in computer science uh, gets a job in computer science, either as a co-op student or once they've graduated. Um, I can't think of any of my former students um, who want to be working who aren't. Everyone has a job or has a job lined up. A lot of them have jobs lined up long before they graduate. So um, the employment opportunities are actually quite good. Now, I'm uh, going to pass it off here to uh, Samantha Morris, who is a student who just graduated, I guess, last month. And, uh, and she's going to give you a bit of a perspective of what Acadia was like for her. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Samantha or Sam. Um, as Darcy said, I graduated this month from Acadia. I did four years at Acadia and I graduated with, uh, I actually, when I enrolled in computer science, it was before we had the applied computer science option. So I actually graduated with the Bachelor of Computer Science with a specialization in software development. Um, so uh, that's, uh, the title, and um, I also dabbled a bit in co-op, although I didn't graduate with co-op on my degree, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that kind of in uh, my little blurb here. So um, I have four main questions that I think um, really help me cover my experience at Acadia. Um, so the first one is, what's life like at Acadia and in Wolfville, Nova Scotia? Uh, well, Acadia is a really tight-knit community, and because of that, you're going to get a super personalized education. Uh, one of the best things about being in a small university town is walking down the street and knowing most of the people you see, or running into your prof at the gym, at the coffee shop. Uh, in your first year at Acadia, your life really revolves around your residence, and so you're on campus a ton. And the majority of Acadia students meet lifelong friends in their residence. And their residence buildings host all kinds of different events every week for the students that live there. And it's a super fun community and you get to know a bunch of people that way. Uh, we're also very much a work hard, play hard community. Um, the students support each other and strive to do their best in academics, but we're also super involved on campus and in the community. Uh, there are clubs for everyone, from video gaming clubs to hiking out and outdoors clubs to knitting clubs, from yoga to rugby to fencing. Um, and all these clubs are run for students by students. In the computer science department specifically, uh, sort of as Darcy mentioned, there's the Acadia Computer Science Society and the Women in Technology Society. Um, there's also opportunities to get involved with the Lego Robotics League, and um, there's a few different uh, technology associations in Wolfville too. And these are all ways that you can um, meet new people and network. Um, all these uh, organizations host tons of social and professional events for everyone who's interested in tech, essentially. So not just necessarily for computer science students. Um, the Acadia community is really close to the Wolfville and the Valley community. Uh, Acadia students are always frequenting the Wolfville Farmer's Market and the clubs love to plan outings to the restaurants and the hiking trails and other things. Um, the people in Wolfville love the students just as much as the students love the people of Wolfville. Um, the Valley, which is the area where Wolfville is in, is one of the most beautiful areas in Nova Scotia and it's super popular for tourists to visit in the summer. So that we get to know and we get to live in this beautiful place with lots of hiking, amazing food, wineries, craft beer, and cider. If you're the kind of person who likes people, there's lots of ways to get involved and socialize and have fun. 
If you're the type of person who prefers to be alone, Wolfville is the most beautiful town to find a spot or have a picnic or walk on the endless hiking trails. Um, one thing that I've heard a lot from incoming students is they worry about small towns not having everything they need. Um, one of the great things is that Main Street is steps away from campus, so which has everything that you really need, such as coffee, groceries, the drugstore, clothing, and gifts. Um, and then 10 minutes away is New Minus, and that's where you find all your bigger chains like Walmart, Sport Check, Dollarama, um, Winners, um, all those sort of places for if, like, you know, maybe you need a new and you might not be able to find that directly in Wolfville. And there's a bus that can take you out there or um, a lot of Acadia students do bring cars with them. And since you'll be attending all sorts of events, you'll meet lots of friends and probably meet someone with a car too. Um, so there's always some sort of event happening on or off campus um, to make new friends. Uh, and to just to get to know and enjoy life. So there's movie nights, craft nights, seminars, music festivals, food festivals, apple picking, gaming competitions, live music, trivia, I could go on. Um, Acadia really has a fantastic community and everyone uh, loves Acadia. Is, what is your favorite aspect about your area of study? Um, when I think about my area of study and my time with the computer science department, um, I think a lot about how much I've benefited from being in a small school. And one of the best things about the small school is that you're taught, well, one, you're taught by your professors and not teaching assistants, which I hear of a lot of at the bigger school. And um, the classes are so small that you really get to know your professors. Um, so the first thing I think about about my time in the computer science department is how my professors were way more than my professors. They were my mentors and my friends. Um, if I ever wanted to kill 15 minutes, I could just stop by Darcy's office and then all of a sudden a half an hour has gone by and we've just been talking. Um, the professors really care about you. I can think of multiple times where I sat in one of my profs offices for like over an hour while they re-explained a concept to me that I didn't get in class. Um, they always had time to help me succeed, and they never make anyone feel unwelcome to ask questions. Um, and also, if I know if I ever need anything in the future, I can reach out to my professors, which is also a great way to get reference letters if you ever need them, maybe for a master's or a job or another degree. Um, so third question is, how has your experience evolved? Um, so I actually have a bit of an interesting kind of evolution of my time at Acadia because I applied, I applied to Acadia as a biology student in November of my grade 12 year. Um, unfortunately, due to the education, high school education system where I came from, I never actually got to touch any computer science, so it wasn't on my radar at all. Um, but then by the end of grade 12, I was like, hmm, maybe I don't want to do biology. So I switched into chemistry. And so I started Acadia in September in chemistry. But then, but then by the end of my first semester, first year, I had been doing all my chemistry courses and I, I really wasn't feeling it. Um, I wasn't passionate about it. I didn't enjoy working in the lab and I had no interest in medical school. So I started to explore ev other ideas and uh, that's how I landed on wanting to try computer science. So in my second semester of first year, I took the Intro to Programming 1 course, and I really liked it. So I decided to switch into programming. And it was really easy, which is another one of the great things about Acadia, is if you don't, if you're not solidly sold on one degree or another, it's really easy to kind of switch around and, and you know, maybe you might start, maybe you're sure about computer science, but you're not sure about what specialization and things like that. Like Acadia and the staff and the faculty are really understanding about that and they make it really easy to kind of help you make your decision. So I liked the idea of working as a consultant or systems analyst. So I enrolled in the software development specialization um, because taking business courses actually really interested me. And in second year, I enrolled in co-op, and it was really great. I loved my time in co-op. 
they held all kinds of workshops and panel discussions with employees from industry so we could learn about life in the office and we could ask any questions any questions about what it would be like working a real job um, they held one-on-one -on -one meetings to go over our cover letters and resumes and make sure that those papers were as strong as they possibly could be and that we were really selling ourselves to these prospective employers. Um, I remember when I was really nervous for one interview, the co-op office actually did a practice interview with me, which is something that they just do for anyone who wants one. So I got to sit with one of the st faculty in the co-op office and they pretended to interview view me and then at the end we got to get o go over my answers and talk about what I could have said better and like some things that I should say in the interview, and it was beyond helpful. Um, through the co-op at Acadia, I like I had interviews with smaller local companies, but I also interviewed with bigger companies like Google, Lockheed Martin, and the federal government. Um, so I eventually landed a job with the government of Canada working in cybersecurity, and I fell in love with that field, and I went back to work with them um, the summer after my third year, and I had the most amazing experience. Experience, I learned so much in those two co-op terms. Um, and then by the end of that summer, I had a job offer from them. So, and that's why I never completed my co-op because I decided that I would just graduate right after my fourth year. And now I will be starting there in September. So super exciting. Um, the final question is what are some of the best opportunities that Acadia has given you? Um, I could probably fill an hour talking about the opportunities that are on campus for students and everything that Acadia has given me. Uh, the person that I am today is really thanks to the school and the faculty and all the opportunities I got there. Um, I think one of the unique things is sort of what I talked about before is that it's a small school. It's a mainly undergraduate school. So all those really cool research and networking opportunities go to younger people like you and me and uh, not masters and PhD students. You don't get lost in the flow of, you know, having 80,000 students. So, you know, you're known, people know you and there are opportunities for you. And then also the close relationships with profs. So like those lead to fantastic references for masters and PhD programs. A lot of my friends are continuing their education at schools like Waterloo, U of T, and like, um, you know, even Harvard, I've seen people do some uh, work at. So um, preparing almost everyone I know for their next step in life. And then also the co-op program was like an awesome opportunity. Um, Kind of in conclusion, the biggest highlights of opportunities would be my co-op work term. Um, I volunteered with a women in science camp and I ran learn to code sessions with uh, 12 year olds. So that was really cool. Um, I got to go to Toronto for the Canadian Women in Computing Conference with three other girls from the computer science department, which was a super unique opportunity that the department helped us uh, be able to do that and then also also just being able to learn about this part of Nova Scotia and the beautifully beauty of Wolfville so it was awesome and I think that's everything for me thank you so much Sam um, it's always nice to have a recent student's perspective um, and if any students have questions for Sam you can type them in the chat box um, so like I said, a copy of this presentation will be available in 24 to 48 hours um, on our Future Students webpage. Um, if you have any questions um, regarding enrollment or admissions or any general questions, you can email Acadia for you at acadiau.ca. And if you have more specific um, computer science questions, you can email um, the admin assistant, Sharon Watson. Um, so Claire is going to put those emails in the chat box there. Um, and now we will head into the live question and answer period. Um, so you can type RH in the chat box if you would like to um, ask your question through microphone um, and we will call on you in order. Uh, or you can also type questions in the chat box if you prefer. 
If you're having any technical issues um, and are unable to use your microphone or the chat box, please email Acadia for you at acadiau.ca and we will moderate on a first come first serve basis. So don't be shy. Um, any questions um, we'll be able to answer. So I'll start it off, I guess, um, give you some time to type your questions. Um, Sam, it's a question for you. Um, so do you have a piece of advice you would give students starting in their first year? Um, oh, a piece for advice for students starting in their first year. Um, I would say try to get out and experience as much of not just Acadia and the campus, but of our town and our community. Um, it, it can be really hard and it can be really nerve wracking to meet new people and to really put yourself out there. Um, but, uh, you know, you just kind of swallow up your pride and like muster up the strength and get out there. And I promise you it will be worth it. Um, you know, the, the people that I know who are involved in the community and they attended the events and um, they get out and they see the valley, um, they, you know, they really enjoy and they really love their time at Acadia. And I think that's kind of the best way to make the most of not just your education, but also the, opp the other opportunities that you have here. Yeah, a lot of first year students do end up regretting um, not getting involved soon enough. Um, or not reaching out to their professors soon enough. Like some students are scared to go to the professors for extra help in their first year, um, but they are here um, to help and um, they're always available to answer your questions. Um, could you please elaborate on the cybersecurity offered at Acadia? Um, Darcy, is that a, or Sam? You, you take this one, Sam. Sure. Um, so there's obviously, Darcy didn't talk about any specific stream for cybersecurity at Acadia, um, but uh, we do have a security course and security is involved in a lot of the other courses that we talk, that we take. So you might, you know, you'll have to take distributed systems, which is about, you know, the internet and networks. And you know that's a really vital part about computer security. And also there's a computer ethics course that we take as computer science students, and that covers a lot of the privacy um, things that we cover in a cybersecurity role. And in general, like a cybersecurity analyst or a cybersecurity developer, you're just pulling tools from all the different uh, sort of specializations and other roles. So you're a bit of a software developer, you're a bit of a network analyst. So um, it, you know, a general computer science degree uh, prepares you really well for that. Um, next question, how does an A-level curriculum overlap with the first year and can some courses be skipped? So I, I guess the answer to that question sort of depends on the curriculum of where it is that you're coming from. So in general, what we do is have students when they submit their high school transcripts to Acadia, then Acadia will determine which courses actually overlap and whether or not you can actually then uh, skip some of the courses in the pile. Um, I will say that computer science is taught very differently at uh, different places around the world. So it's not as clean uh, as, for example, a math or an English curriculum where it might be easier to say this counts as a, uh, as a first year course. Um, but having said that, if you do have um, high school programming experience and you do have credits, then at the very minimum, what we can do is look to fast track you through our first year classes so that you're taking second year classes um, in your first year. Are there any other questions? Doesn't look like it. Um, that was a quick 
question period. Um, but like I said, if you do have any other questions, you can email um, Sharon or Acadia for you, um, and we'll get those answers for you. So thank you everyone for joining us for the computer science webinar today. Oh, oh, I see another question. Nope, there is a question. Um, so if you're doing a Bachelor of Computer Science, can you move to do a Bachelor of Applied Computer Science? Uh, yeah, so the quick, quick answer to that is yes, we have students who do that all of the time. The overlap between a regular Bachelor of Computer Science and the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science is actually quite high. So often a student will start out in a Bachelor of Computer Science degree They'll get in a couple of years and decide that um, decide that they want to switch to the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science. And all we do is take all the courses that you've already taken and we fit those into the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science degree. So um, the earlier you make the switch, the easier it is. Um, but you can switch back and forth between degree programs without too much of a problem. Uh, I seen there's another question there about the cybersecurity course. We do have a computer security course um, in computer science in our third year. Um, and uh, so that course is being taught in the winter term, I think, in this upcoming year. So it is a third year course. We do only currently have the one course that's dedicated to nothing but security, not specifically cybersecurity, but security as a whole. Um, but as Sam said in um, the answer before, there is security that is covered in some other classes. So there is web security covered in the web centric class and there is general privacy stuff in our um, computers and society class. So there's other security stuff that's covered little bits and pieces along the way in all of the other classes. Um, so we don't have anything that's specifically just cybersecurity, but we do have a generic security course, which is offered in the third year. I can also add for um, just the cybersecurity part, since there's two questions about it now. Um, while there's only one course that is, you know, specifically called security, um, I am entering the workforce as a cybersecurity analyst starting in September. And the the tests that I had to do for, you know, I, I had interviews at a few different places. I had interviews at Lockheed Martin. I had interviews with the Government of Canada. And um, all of the tests and um, sort of questions that I got, um, they were mostly networks based. So people were, you know, they would, I had to talk about, um, you know, packets and filtering and basically things that, we're less covered in the security course, but more covered in our networks and distributed systems courses. So if, if you're interested in cybersecurity and you're looking to take that route, um, whenever you have a choice between, you know, oh, should I take, you know, this course or that course, um, try to pick the one that's, you know, the most about networks or the most about security as you can. And, you know, that prepared me better than anything for those sort of evaluations. Um, so we have another question here. Um, so what laptop is best for coding required at Acadia? Uh, yes, I get this. Uh, I get this question every year and um, I don't have a standard answer for it because it really depends on the student and what they prefer. But computer science as a whole doesn't have a recommendation of Windows or Mac or Linux will support um, all three of them. Um, so the so it really depends on what it is that you like for a laptop. So I often tell students, if you like playing video games, then you probably need a Windows machine. Um, and you know that's perfectly fine. If you want a Mac. Uh, that's not a problem either. That That's what I use. And if I remember correctly, Sam's got a Mac as well. Um, so uh, either operating system doesn't really make a difference. What I do suggest for students is I tell them to consider the size of the machine. 
if you get a laptop with a really small screen, then it makes it hard to do a lot of programming. You need a lot of you need some more space. So um, I'm I'm a fairly I'm a fairly big guy and I don't mind carrying around a big laptop. So I have a 15 inch laptop, but I also have an external monitor so to give me more space. Uh, other students might live off campus and walk in a little bit. They might want something a little smaller and lighter, and that's OK. Um, so I just tend to tell students that, you know, it really depends on what you want, but I uh, I would avoid anything with an 11 or 12 inch screen because it's really a little too small um, to be able to see everything on. Um, I would avoid anything that resembled a Chromebook or a netbook or anything like that. Uh, you're going to need a fully functional operating system, whether that be Windows or Mac OS. Um, yeah, and just uh, make sure that you have a way to back up all of your data, whether that be backing it up online in the cloud or having an external backup disk. And, um, and that's sort of about it with the one caveat that, and I will throw this in because I, uh, I always like to throw this one in, technology services on campus does sell laptops. So you can go to the technology services uh, store and they have a couple of recommended laptops. And if you get a model that they recommend, then that also means that they support it. You can get your laptop fixed on campus. And I've seen students walk down, hand in their laptop because the keyboard is broken or they broke the screen or something and it's still under warranty. And because it was one of the recommended laptops, um, technology services had all the parts on hand and, you know, Troy tells the student, you know, OK, go have lunch, come back in a couple of hours and your laptop will be fixed, which is significantly better than having a laptop where you have to send it away and you're without a laptop for three weeks. So I'd highly suggest technology services and see what they have. And other than that, um, solid state hard drive, lots of RAM, fast CPU, good graphics card. It doesn't you know, probably in that order um, is what I would look at in terms of machines. I will add for the technology services thing, they are actually a certified Apple repair place. I'm not sure Apple has some fancy word for the people who are able to fix their devices. They can fix your iPhone too. Um, and they just, they just order in the parts. So, um, which is really nice. And um, for if any of you don't know about CPU and graphics cards and everything yet, um, I do have a bit of advice about if you're looking at Apple computers, um, I would avoid uh, MacBook Airs just because in my experience, they do have less power inside them than the Pro. And um, I have seen people struggling to run some of the more powerful programs and applications that we use in our uh, degree on the Air. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Uh, next question says, does computer science and software engineering the same at Acadia? Um, so we technically don't have a software engineering degree. What we have is the Bachelor of Applied Computer Science and Software Development, but we sort of use those two terms interchangeably, computer science and software development. Um, in particular, and this is sort of different in Canada than it is in, in some other countries, if you want to be a software engineer, then you actually need an engineering degree with a specialization in software. And that is not something that we offer in the computer science department at Acadia, because you would actually have to um, you would have to be uh, it would have to be an accredited engineering program. So you would have to look at the Acadia um, Applied Science Department uh, for that, uh, if you want to look towards that particular degree. But a, in some respects, um, a software engineering, software development is computer science. So um, if that's what you're looking for, then you're going to get a lot of the same material. I would also say I have friends who are engineering, and I have friends who took the engineering route to do software engineering. 
they didn't really start coding until their third year when they, because the engineering program at Acadia, you do two years at Acadia, then the rest of your time at Dalhousie. And the software engineers actually didn't touch any computer. I think they took one coding course in their two years at Acadia, but they didn't really do a lot of computer stuff until um, they got to Dal. So that is one difference. Yeah, so it takes them a long time before they get around to programming. Um, okay, so now the question is, if you can't join the September intake and you can only join in January, um, will Acadia offer the course online until then? So, so the answer to that question is, uh, well, there's sort of two answers to the question, all depending on which one you mean. You can start in January, as in not take any classes in the fall and just start in January. We offer programming one in the winter term. You can take calculus one in the winter term. We can get you your math courses in the winter term. So if you don't want to start until January, that is a possibility. Right now, um, this week actually is the week we're trying to determine which courses are going to be offered in line, um, online and which ones are going to be in class and which ones are going to be a hybrid. So by the end of this week or early next week, we should know about the math courses. But in particular, the computer science course, the programming one course, is going to be offered in a hybrid model where all of the lectures will be online and the classes are going to be um, just where you go if you have questions and ask and want to ask for help. So someone could do the computer science class in the fall um, completely online if they didn't come to class. Now, I'm not sure of the details about the midterms and the exams for that one yet, but right now the model that we're looking at is that students won't physically have to be here to take the class. If they are, they'll be um, options for them to be able to come to class and ask questions and do stuff like that but our current expectation is that all of the lectures will be online and that's a that that'll be answered with a meeting that i have tomorrow and another one on wednesday and then by the end of the week that'll uh, be mostly ironed out but that's the direction that we're moving at the moment yeah, so we're, we are still trying to figure out a lot of things um, about the fall, um, but we will keep you updated on all of that throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. given, given that I am the person who's teaching one of the sections of the first year class, uh, I know that I'm uh, currently in discussions with the other faculty member, and it's our belief that what we're going to do is actually uh, do a flipped classroom where all of the lectures will be online. Students can watch the lectures. They can do the work. Um, and if they have questions, they can either come to um, come to um, either a virtual uh, help hour where they can log in and, and use Teams and do what we're doing now and ask questions and get help. Or they can come to a classroom and ask questions and get help. Um, so that's the way that we're currently planning on running that course. All the details haven't been worked out, but but that is the way that I plan on running that course. So, any other questions? Doesn't look like it right now. Um, so Claire put in the contact information for computer science and then our general um, recruitment email. Um, so feel free to send an email to either of those. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for joining. Um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Excellent. Oh. Thank you very much for having us. Oh, did I see another couple of questions pop up there? Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to keep on with a couple more questions? Um, sure. Uh, assign if you're still free. <laughs> uh, I'm still free for a couple of minutes. Uh, okay. How assignments and tests will be done online is going to depend on the faculty member. Um, there's no one set uh, way that we have an answer to that. Um, in computer science, most of the assignments um, have always been done online anyway, so this really won't change any of that. Um, I'm not sure yet about the testing and the exams. So we do have um, we do have a content management system that is used for all of our classes uh, called Moodle. 
uh, or, so, or I should say it's a Moodle system we call ours Acorn. So that can do online testing and stuff like that. So um, so I assume that there'll be lots of uh, smaller amounts of testing that way. And then just lots of programming, which is sort of what computer science is about, understanding and programming and answering questions and assignments. Um, so that's that question. The next one, what are the job prospects after a Bachelor of Computer Science? Um, uh, honestly, um, you can work in any field that has computers. Um, and I, it sounds like kind of odd when I say that, but really any field where anybody is doing anything with computers, you can get a job doing computers in that field. So it depends on what your interest is. Um, I know that when Sam came to Acadia, she wasn't thinking that she was going to end up working for the Department of National Defense doing cybersecurity, but that's what interests her and that's where she's working right now. And if she decided, uh, you know, uh, two or three years down the road that she wanted to work for another company doing something different, she could just as easily switch to that. So any field right now which uses computers needs people to write programs for them, and you can get a job working for um, basically any one of those companies. So you can work pretty much wherever you want. Are the job prospects good? Um, well, I would say that there is no company that I know of now that's using less computers than they did 10 years ago. And I can't think of any company who 10 years from now is gonna be using less computers than they do now. So from that perspective, I think the job prospects are really quite good simply because of the fact that everything that we're doing is computerized. And as time goes on, all of these fields are going to need somebody to do computer work in them, whether that be uh, running your local farm or running your local business or um, working in, in fields where people do um, you know interesting things. There's just a lot of computer science going on there everywhere. So, I mean, if you like cars, get a job for a car company doing computers for a car company, right? They, they do tons of it. Um, so really, I think the job prospects are quite good. I don't know of any of my students who are looking for work who don't have a job. Now, maybe Sam knows. Do you know of any students that you graduated with, Sam, who don't have jobs yet? Not computer science students. I know I know um, a handful of people who did other degrees who don't have jobs, but I think the statistic is that there's something like, uh, something in like five years, there's going to be one million jobs and only 300,000 grads to fill them. And uh, computer science is one of those really lucky degrees where you don't need a master's to like do the whole job. You know what I mean? It, it's not like biology where you do four years and all you can do is, you know, help out in the lab. You know, you do your four years, your bachelor's and you can do anything with it. It's awesome. Mm hmm. Now, next question is, can I list some of the companies which come to the campus for placements? Um, so we have um, agreements that the co-op office would be a better group to answer this question, but we have um, co-op relationships with a lot of companies across Canada, although the bulk of our co-op students usually tend to be, um, usually tend to be within the maritime provinces, which is Nova Scotia and PEI and New Brunswick. But nonetheless, um, we've had co-op placements at um, a video game company called EB Games, which is one of the largest independent video game um, uh, companies that they make sporting games like you know, FIFA and NHL and and those types of games and rugby for EA. Um, so we've had co-op students with them. We've had co-op students um, with uh, some of the really big game companies out in BC. Um, all the big names, IBM, BlackBerry, um, we've had people with them. Canada, if you're not from Canada, Canada has essentially five or six really big banks across the entire country. And we do placements with all of the big banks. So um, Bank of Nova Scotia, Bank of Montreal, um, 
those types of uh, those types of companies, uh, a lot of consulting companies, um, you know, some of the really big consulting companies. And then uh, we also play students with a lot of really small local companies that might only have 10 or 15 people working with them. Um, we place a lot of students with the government of Canada. Um, so I know that Sam worked for the communication security establishment, which is basically Canada's version of the NSA. Um, uh, so we do a lot of placements with with the government that way as well. So, uh, you know, just a lot of different companies, uh, oil and gas research, just, you know, uh, I, I don't have a full listing. I do I do know that we place our students all over the uh, all over the country though. Halifax specifically has a really up and coming tech startup community. So um, there's a lot of uh, jobs there um, and a lot so a lot of those companies will come to our campus for placements. And Halifax is also one of the major naval bases. So there's a lot of um, the big defense contractors have uh, headquarters here in Halifax, like General Dynamics Mission Systems, Lockheed Martin. Um, and so th they'll come to campus too. Mm -hmm. Minimum wage during co-op is, um, so in Canada, the minimum wage is set by the individual provinces. So depending on which province you end up working in will depend on what your minimum wage will be. But the last time I checked with the co-op office, I think the average wage paid to co-op students in computer science is in the $17 an hour range, $16 or $17 an hour. So um, that works out to be uh, for the four months that you would be off on co-op, it's about nine or $10,000 but it depends quite heavily on the job. I've seen some students, um, when minimum wage was lower about 10 or 12 years ago, I saw one student who wanted to move back and work at a job in their hometown so they could live with their parents for the summer. And they took a minimum wage job paying like $12 an hour because that, that was where they wanted to live. And then I've seen other students work at BlackBerry and make $28 an hour. So it really depends quite heavily on the job that you've applied for, what it is that they're offering. Some jobs in, will offer more than others, but that isn't controlled by us. So what, do, what is all that we do is we help you find those positions and the, and the, um, what you make it, it depends on the company and the position itself and that's something you would know before you applied what the amount of money that they were offering but we do require that they pay you at least minimum wage so uh next one scholarships and bursaries um yes we do have um some scholarships and bursaries in computer science generally there's a there's a whole field at acadia whole group that deals with scholarships and bursaries. So unfortunately, I can't help you much there. Um, but we do have some entrance scholarships. We do have some bursaries um, uh, depending on uh, depending on where you're applying from and all of that other stuff. Um, but that would be with your application package. They would have given you the information to apply for um, scholarships. There are a few that we offer in term like second and third and fourth year students that Sharon and I actually uh, are responsible for um, for dealing with, but for all the incoming ones, excuse me, for all the incoming ones, that would be the scholarships office. They would know all about those. I think, yeah, recruitment probably would know more, but I'm pretty sure um, from my understanding, the way that Acadia mostly works is there's not a lot of scholarships that you actually have to apply to. Um, but it's mostly the department suggests to you or gives gives it to you or professors choose, uh, which makes it nice and easy. You don't have to write a ton of applications. Mm -hmm. That's really nice as well. And I hear that uh, Rohan says that he's uh, got has his letter of offer and he's planning to come. Excellent. I'll be happy to see you in September. And so that that will be good to see. I'm always excited when new students arrive in September. Okay, 
We'll try this one more time. <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> Any more questions? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we can be reached um, at email uh, by email at any time. Um, so thank you, everyone, for attending for the third time. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Bye bye.